Hey fellow artists, happy spring! Get in this springtime mood and paint with me this watercolor using wet on wet technique. Let's do it! First I wet the paper with water, a lot of water, you can see the shine there. Then what I did was for the background, I added the yellow, which is wet. So a watery mixture, watery puddle with some green. And then I added right next to it, this is Venetian red. I'm using QOR watercolors here for the background. And you can see how beautifully these colors bleed into one another. I love, love, love this technique for backgrounds. The brush I'm using is silver brush, um, their oval one, three quarter oval, which is a fantastic brush. It's great for so many different techniques, such as this one. I'm getting more of a kind of a line here, some marks and look at the bleed with um, that green. And this is the natural kit, earth tones kit from QR, I'll put the link in the description box. But this is gonna be the stem of the bud, the wildflower bud. So this is gonna be the stem and it's a wildflower. So I want it to be, I want it to bleed and I want it to be kind of messy. So this is, and I'm, I'm pausing, you can see in between each stroke because I wanna see what the bleed does. And there's the, I did a little circle, so there's the bud. You can kind of see it in my sketch. And I'm going to speed up a little bit here, just adding a little more green while the paper is still really wet, taking advantage of the wet on wet technique before it dries too much. Now the background I really can't do anything now because it's at that stage where it's dried a little bit. And if I do anything to it, I may get a bloom or cauliflower. So what I'm doing now is just adding color to the bud, to the flower. And this is adding the same color to the wing of the butterfly. Now here it is dry, completely different, right? Look how, how much lighter it is. What I'm doing here is taking off the masking fluid. I have masking fluid on there to preserve the white of the paper. So now that I did all my background and it's completely dry, I'm using a rubber eraser to get off um, and very carefully because I don't want to lift any of the paint just the masking fluid. Now that uh, the masking fluid is off, not all of it is off. I have some of it left on there around the green of the stem and uh, some other areas of the background. But now that it's off, I'm using a yellow. I think this is a cadmium yellow in the Schminky kit now. I wanted a really bright yellow. And the QOR that I used for the background, that kit did not have a super bright yellow. It had a yellow ochre, which is very earthy, which is great, which was perfect for the background. But now for the butterfly, I wanted something really bright. And you'll see how I applied the yellow over the white of the paper that was preserved from the masking fluid. So it makes it even a really bright, even brighter than the wing of the butterfly. So now that I've got the wing a little wet, it's it's more damp, it's not wet, it's damp on the paper right now from the yellow paint. I'm adding some burnt sienna to outline the wing and just let the color bleed into the yellow and get some definition of the wing. Now I finish up, let this dry a little bit. Then I go in and add, when it's still damp, you can see I'm adding a little more detail with some thicker pigment, basically some thicker paint on my brush. Not as wet. I let that dry and I go to the flower. 
and I'm looking for a deeper red this time. So I'm using a Lazarian Crimson from the Schminke kit, which is a wonderful kit. The pigments are very strong. Look at that. Just beautiful, beautiful colors in the Schminke kit. I'm mixing up my reds to try to get a bright, deep, rich red for the bud. And I don't mind that it's bleeding into the yellow a little bit. I actually kind of want that to create some shadows in the yellow background, which basically are the yellow petals of this wildflower. Now, while the petals are drying, I'm starting to go in with a little more detail for the stem. I am mixing the two colors together that are in the Schminke kit. It is a phthalo green and a olive green. And I'm mixing a little yellow in there too. I, it ended up getting a little too dark for me. So I let it, I let it dry and I, I did some lifting of the green and you'll see that in a little bit. Now, after I did the yellow on the butterfly, on the other wing of the butterfly, while it's still wet, I'm blending in a darker color. This is basically just a blue, like a dark, it actually looks dark, but it's actually just a really dark green with a little burnt sienna mixed into it to get a kind of a grayish green color. I do add a little black because black, when added to yellow, creates green, a very pretty green color. What I'm looking for is a touch of reflection from the flower and the green stem of the flower. So I just wanted a suggestion of green on the petals. Now I'm adding burnt sienna and blending it in uh, while it's wet, just kind of getting, again, I'm just starting to get some structure for the butterfly wing. Speeding it up a little bit here. This is burnt sienna and I actually add a little black here coming up. It gets pretty dark, but then I add some blue, um, ultramarine blue with the black. Now I'm just adding water to get kind of a nice bleed. And I'm trying to preserve the yellow as much as I can. So I'm being very careful, holding my brush straight up and down when I want a finer line. And then I let it dry for a little bit and see what happens. Moving on to the other wing of the butterfly. Now that the flower has dried a little bit, the wing has dried a little bit, dropping in a little color. Now this color is a reflection of the flower on the butterfly. So that's what I was going for there. And now I'm just kind of meddling into the, in the flower, getting it a little darker little bit darker values in there. You can see I'm going pretty dark with my values, meaning like it's a really dark red. So I'm adding a little yellow to my brush, which does not have a lot of water on it. Now it has a little more water on it and I charging some yellow in there, meaning I'm just I just dropped some pigment right into the flower there. Now I'm going for my super dark values and using a it's a really a dark blue mixture with a touch of Payne's gray to it helps to get some structure too in the bud. The bud is in the shadow. Then I decide to use some of that darker color for my stem and the 
green kind of fun wildflowers and they actually have some little purple um cottonish looking flowers there so i wasn't happy with the green it got way too dark which is distracting from the butterfly so we will get back to that later but for now what i was i also wasn't crazy about how this butterfly wing was turning out so what i did was i wet the paper i sprayed with my water sprayer and have a towel underneath let it just drip and move around i had so much paint on there that it actually is turning out okay if you like this video please hit that like and subscribe button so i can make more for you thank you beauty is in the eye of the beholder right um taking a tissue mopping up a little bit and I'm just watching what happens with the water and the paint. And I'm mixing some colors here, dabbing in some more burnt sienna while it's still super wet, because I know I'm going to get a really big bleed now that it's super wet. And I'm watching, I'm tilting. And this is on Arches Cold Press 140 weight. It's on the pad. So I'm able to pick it up and tilt it easily. Or you can use any kind of board. Um, a gator board is popular when you do wet on wet technique like this. Now I'm doing my darker value, my darker pigment again, which is a mixture of blues and browns. I'm just, when I pause like that, I'm just watching the water, I'm watching the paint seeing what it does trying to hold back and not overdo it <laughs> the biggest challenge of all patience moving on to the flower and while the uh, wings dry a little bit i'm playing around with the flower wet on wet again doing some splash techniques and uh, just having a little fun Again, my spray bottle, I wanted to get the background a little darker there in the corner to draw the eye in to the butterfly and the flower. Everything's dry now. I can do the butterfly, the tentacle very carefully with a super fine brush. His legs. And the fun part is detail with watercolor pencils. This is Karen Dash aquarelle watercolor pencil white i also use yellow and a turquoise blue for the dots and uh, just a little details for the butterfly i did activate some of the pencil with water some i didn't you can also use a white posca pen and here is the finished painting fellow artist if you are interested in joining me in the joyful watercolor membership click the link below for more information and to become a beta member thank you for watching